Continuing our series of scouting reports for some players the 49ers might be considering on day one, round one, maybe even day two as well on today's episode. Future 49ers center, Zach Frazier. We've got defensive lineman Darius Robinson and cornerback Enos Rextra. Are they future San Francisco 49ers? Coming at you right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Crocky 209. Thanks, everybody, for making us. Your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We appreciate all of the everydayers out there, and we appreciate everyone who subscribes on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. We appreciate it always, and we always uh, love it when you hit the sub, the sub, not only the subscribe, but the thumbs up if you like the pod and the notification bell on YouTube if you're a YouTuber so you know when we have a new episode and you can hit us on those live episodes that we do we'll probably do one on Thursday night to end the week as we usually do breaking down more prospects talking about what's going on with your San Francisco 49ers daily today's episode of locked up 49ers is brought to you by FanDuel make every moment more right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet that's 200 bucks if your bet wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started all right, here we go. Uh, let's go Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia, is next up on our list. We've seen him to the 49ers at pick 31 in mock drafts. I've seen Zach Frazier at pick 63 to the 49ers in mock, mock drafts. So I've seen him day one. I've seen him day two. Uh, I'm wondering what kind of a prospect you think Zach Frazier is. I think I've got a pretty good read on Zach Frazier. He's a center out of West Virginia. And... One of the things right away that you see with Zach Frazier is his build. He's a he's kind of a stubby, shorter, powerhouse of a dude, and he does not lose the leverage battle. And when you wonder, okay, how come he's so good at winning the leverage battle? Well, it's because he's a former wrestler. He's got a wrestling background. And so when I learned that, it all made sense with Zach Frazier. 6'2 and 5'8, 313 pounds, didn't run at the combine. Uh, more on that in a second, because I do have some questions about uh, overall athleticism with Zach Frazier. But a really good prospect, Croc, at the center position, which is a, a long-term need for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, I don't think the 49ers are forced into anything right now on the offensive line. They've got their starting five back from last year. But I do think they have to start looking ahead at multiple positions on the offensive line, tackle, guard, and center is Zach Frazier that guy and I think he could step in and play guard immediately even if it's not center that he immediately plays because the 49ers might need whoever it is that is the future center for them to get some experience because we know that the center is the player that makes the calls and so I think interviews will be huge if the 49ers do draft a future center on this football team and I don't know if there's a college player that Kyle Shanahan would feel really good about stepping in and week one being a starter, even though Zach Frazier has that kind of ability to do that in the NFL for whatever team drafts him. But power and competitive, uh, powerful and competitive center uh, can see that wrestling background when he wins the leverage battles over and over again. More of a wall off blocker than a road grader, I think. If uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing, he 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 gets his blocks done, but. On the concern side of things, Croc, as good as he is, as solid as he is as a center, and I think he's a starting NFL center, uh, he didn't wow me with his ability to blow people off the ball. He didn't wow me with his athleticism, getting out on the move. Uh, he's got shorter 32-inch arms, but you know he's six foot two. He's a he's a center, and, and so that's not anything that's really super concerning, but that's his build. He's an interior guy all day long. Um might not have ideal quicks for a zone scheme, actually. And I think he can play in a zone scheme fine, but he's not one of these centers that just gets out and moves and is a supreme, superior athlete at the position. And I'm really interested to see, Croc, what his agilities look like because he didn't run at the combine. And uh, I think he did have some injuries, maybe, and he's going to have his West Virginia Pro Day coming up here later in the month. And I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to that because I have a feeling they're going to be just f fine, good, but not great agilities and, and workout numbers for Zach Frazier. That's the player I see. I do like him. I think he's a fit for the 49ers. Would much rather him, though, 
go when we see in those mocks at pick 63 in round two than I think round one. I do not think he's going to be the best player on the board for the 49ers at pick 31. I think he's a second round guy all day and a really just rock solid center prospect in the NFL. What'd you see when you put on the West Virginia tape and watch center Zach Frazier? Well, first of all, you, you said a couple of things here. Uh, one was you're not sure that he's a first round guy. And the, my immediately I started thinking, how many centers go first round? Like over the last five, six years, I would say two, maybe. I feel like the Colts got Kelly. Was it the Colts? And how long ago was that? I say I mean, five, Kelly, six years. That was a while ago now. That's six, seven years ago, maybe. Yeah, Ryan Kelly, there was Tyler Linderbaum at the end of round one to the Ravens two years ago. There, I think we might be missing one, but it doesn't happen very often. And that's kind of like, if you're going to draft the center in the first round, even late first round at pick 31, he, he better be pretty ridiculous. And I don't know if Zach Frazier's on that level. I think he's more rock solid than ridiculous as far as what type of football player I project him to be in the NFL. And, and Linderbaum coming out of college, he was a guy like a lot of people like they were expect, like thinking he'd potentially be gone top 15, maybe top 20 for sure. And he was a guy that was at 31. And it's like, oh, heck yeah, you're at 31. Like, let's take this guy. Uh, I'm not sure Frazier is that caliber of a center. And also, you know, watching him, another thought, right? Because you kind of want to compare how certain guys look. Creed Humphreys. I remember watching Creed Humphreys' highlights at the combine. I mean, excuse me, at uh, draft day. And just seeing what it looked like and how well he moved in space and just crushing guys. And you watch his film, you see the same things. I didn't quite see that. And Creed Humphrey was second, late second, early third round. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't even see a Creed Humphrey caliber prospect who obviously I said, even a Creed Humphrey, like he ends up being a terrific NFL player so far. Right. Uh, so I, 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 watching him, it was interesting because, you know, like I told you before we started, I don't think I've ever evaluated a center. And I thought a lot of what he did was good. I felt like he, was smart that you know he had to take on stunts. He did a really good job. I thought his anchor was solid because those are like probably the first few things I'm looking for when I'm looking at any office alignment, especially interior for the 49ers. Like, how well do you move? Uh, you know, how is your anchor? And then we start to get into like specifics, um, you know, what he does well against, what he doesn't do well against. But I thought he did everything very well, but I'm not sure he did anything excellent. And when you watch it, like just seeing him get out in space, it's like, well, he did get to the spot, but it's not like this flashy, sexy uh, get into a spot where you don't see like this uh, super athlete out in space and be like, wow, like this is a guy I have to have. So uh, I did see a lot of a lot of good, but nothing extraordinary. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I saw with Zach Frazier. He's a player that you feel good about. Uh, I think the bus potential is very low on him. Uh, but I don't know if there's a super high ceiling. And if you're going to draft a center in the first round, you got to think you've got a star player on the interior. And to be honest with you, there might be a couple other guys that play center in the NFL that could go even in, in front of them. So I would take Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon ahead of him if we're projecting him to center. And I think I like Graham Barton as a future center in the NFL. And I think I liked his tape more than, than Zach Frazier's as well. And who knows, both those guys are gone by the time the 49ers pick at 31 anyway, potentially. Now, I think we see that a lot with uh, some of the just offensive linemen in general, right? You see, you'll see a a tackle get moved to guard, and him go higher than an actual guard. And I think it's the same with center, where you might see someone who's a guard, and you've seen a lot of film on him there, and they're like, you know what? I think he might be a better center, and he might be taken before a lot of the centers because the centers don't have a whole lot of positional versatility. Yeah, that's one thing that's that I do like about Frazier is he could play guard, especially early. And we saw this with Aaron Banks. I think that's one of the reasons why Aaron Banks never suited up for the 49ers as a rookie, because he was a guard only player. He wasn't going to play swing tackle on Sundays and he wasn't going to play center on Sundays. So when you're one of the seven guys who suits up on Sunday, those two backups, one of them's got to be able to play tackle and one of them's got to be able to play center. And so uh, I think the versatility is pretty important uh, if you're going to be someone who's rotational as a young player unless you're going to be a plug-and-play starter right away. And I just don't know if they're going to draft the center that can come in and, and play that position. And that's one of the things we're not privy to is the interviews and how smart he is, how good he is on the whiteboard. Is he someone that Kyle Shanahan you know, is interviewing and talking to? And he's like, oh, I feel great about this guy coming in and making calls immediately as a rookie at center. Right. Those, those are the things that's a little bit difficult. The way he plays on the field, it looks like he's a pretty smart player. But you know, those are just 
that's something that we really can't comment on is how good he's going to be at doing some of those things in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And, and Kyle Shanahan, to me, when you look at kind of how he's addressed the center position, it seems like a lot of guys that just a veteran who will understand right away how to do his job, and then that's the guy that he's going to make his center as opposed to drafting a guy high and plugging him in and saying, all right, you're going to be our guy at the center position. Last year they did sign as an undrafted free agent, the kid out of Arizona State. That was that was the year before, wasn't it? Okay, year before. Um, the center. I'm blanking on his name. Yeah, out of Arizona. But a, a lot of people like to. I remember there were yeah. people mocking him in the third round, and he ended yeah. up going undrafted. And obviously, you know, he didn't last long uh, with the 49ers. So. The 49ers haven't drafted centers, period, in Kyle Shanahan's regime, which is another. He's a lot of money on them. Though. I mean, Richburg, he, like, yeah, Rich he Burke, a lot of money. He got Mac. Yeah, but so he, he likes the veteran variety of center, and I think it's because of that I think is what's going on upstairs and, and how much you have to know to be a center for Kyle Shanahan. So maybe we shouldn't expect for Kyle Shanahan to be drafting a center very high unless he can start out at another position and end up at center. Uh, but I like Zach Frazier. Don't love Zach Frazier. I think there's going to be other players I'm going to like better at pick 31. If he's there in the second round, though, I'd be really interested at pick 63 for Zach Frazier. My guess he goes off the board somewhere in between the 49ers' first two picks. If you are an offensive line expert, neither Croc or I are, even though we put our scouting hat on. I've watched a lot of linemen in my day. Uh, definitely didn't play the position. Croc's not built like an offensive lineman. He is a cornerback expert, though. But if you're an offensive line expert, let us know what you think about all the players we break down for the 49ers on Twitter, at BD Peacock, at Crocky209. Of, of course, you can drop a comment anytime on YouTube. Croc, being the corner expert, he's going to talk to us about Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri a little bit later. And, of course... Defensive lineman, defensive end, defensive tackle, Darius Robinson, his teammate from that Missouri defense. Next. This episode of Lockdown 49ers is brought to you by Game Time. And when you're getting prepped to buy tickets for maybe a 49ers football game, maybe you're getting ready to go to a concert with some friends, any theater events near you, going to see a comedy show, any sports Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of those events. And it shouldn't be a hassle to buy tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when it's time to buy tickets. It shouldn't be hard. It should be exciting. And you should be able to get the best deal possible. And that's where game time comes in. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. You see the view from your seat before you buy. So you know what you get when you show up at your event. All in prices show your total upfront. So you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. A couple taps on the app. And those tickets are right there on game time for you when you arrive at your event and you don't have to go scrolling through thousands of emails to find those tickets that you purchased at one point. You can get tickets same day, even up to an hour after event. It's the play an hour after the event starts. Yeah, uh, it's the place to find last minute seats. So download game time app today, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Darius Robinson, defensive lineman out of Missouri, and a uh, really fun player to watch, Croc, was Darius Robinson. And the very first thing you see is you see an NFL football player. I mean, dude is huge. He's six foot five, 285 pounds at the combine, 34 and a half inch arms. 10 and three quarters inch hands, just huge hands, long arms. He's big, he's strong. And I think his hands are maybe the best part about his game crock because as a defensive end, as a senior, and he played some tackle earlier on in his career at Missouri and his uh, sack numbers went up as an end and was pretty much unblockable at the senior bowl as well, which was a, which was just a huge boon for him and, and his pocketbook and where he might get drafted in the NFL draft. Uh, he controls guys in the run game with his hands and long arms. And th there's almost no buzz potential, I feel like, with Darius Robinson because he's going to come in and he's going to set the edge in the run. And, and he's going to do a phenomenal job at that. And not only is he really good, Croc, with his hands and being strong at the point of attack and controlling offensive linemen, he's then really good at using those big, strong hands and long arms to disengage from the block and actually go make a play or you know swim past the guy and actually, as big as he is, get around the corner and and get after the quarterback with the pass rush as well. So I was impressed watching Darius Robinson's tape. He's a really good football player. 
I don't know if he has the juice to be a double-digit sack guy off the edge in the NFL, but if you want a big end, maybe in a 3-4, or you want a, an edge setter in a 4-3 defense, and you could even move him around and have him rush from the inside, and we've seen that type of usage from the San Francisco 49ers, then that's almost every team in the NFL that can use a player like that. Uh, he's a phenomenal fit. Really like Darius Robinson. It's not often that you cut on the film of an edge rusher in college, and you're expecting to see this, like, terrific pass rush guy and then you're you, you see him against the run and you get excited like i got excited yeah. watching him against the run just how well like you said some of the things he does which 49ers especially on that line you know that's where they they've lacked a little bit and you and i have even talked about eric armstead you know putting him outside and then somebody else play inside so you can be good against the run stout against the run and and hold that edge this guy was, I mean, once he put his hands on guys, he wasn't moving and they weren't moving at all. And then, like you said, love that you mentioned how he disengages. He disengages well. And he actually moves. And I was, I, you know, we've talked about this a lot. Anybody that's listened to me break down a lot of these prospects. A lot of times I don't go to the combine numbers or anything like that because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want his size to tell me the story of how he plays. I've, I felt like he played like somebody 6'5", 285, but he did not look like somebody 285. He looked 6'5". He looked tall. He looked this lengthy guy, but he wear, wears his, his weight very well. And he was a fluid mover. I thought he had a big-time motor. Um, you know, again, when I was watching him, not a guy that maybe is going to give you a lot of sacks, but if you're looking at someone, looking for someone who kind of who have excelled in the 49ers, Defense, the Aminahus, uh, the Cleveland Farrell did well, right? Like people are missing Cleveland Farrell. Uh, the Arden Key, some of these guys that were able to kind of play outside, rush inside as well, um, hold the edge versus defense, not get moved around, not get bullied. I think he is like primed to play for the 49ers who are playing this 4-3 defense but want to play these two high safeties. You're going to lose because you have one guy, uh, one less guy in the box Who's going to set the edge there? It would also potentially give you pass rush productivity. It felt like Robinson was that type of guy. I, I, I love the motor too, just watching him. If he doesn't get to the quarterback, he's spinning out of there. He's running, trying to chase quarterbacks down. Uh, I saw that happen several times. I was very impressed. But again, it, it's just interesting because I didn't see like, oh man, I'm blown away because this guy's a terrific pass rusher. He's just like a really good football player to me. Yeah. Yeah, you 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 always, especially when you're talking about a first round edge guy in the NFL draft, you're like, okay, let's just watch him try to run the arc and beat the guy with speed around the corner, and that's not not Darius Robinson's game at all. But I was impressed with him able to get the corner sometimes, despite his size and his his workout numbers. He does have some ability to you know swim past guys around the corner, soften the edge with his his arms and his hands. And and kind of flip his hips and, and turn the corner a little bit. So I was impressed there. There is something there as as far as a pass rusher from him. He's just not like a dynamic speed type of rusher. And he only ran at the combine four nine five crock in the forty yard dash with a one point seven three. I think it is. Let me make sure I got the numbers right. One point seven three ten yard split, which is you know it's not super dynamic as far as that athleticism. Thirty five inch verticals is pretty good for a guy his size. Um, but it's funny because the other Robinson that we've talked about with the 49ers, Chop Robinson, I mean, Chop Robinson's 10-yard split was 154. Darius Robinson's was 173 in the first 10 yards. That's a pretty big difference in the in the get-off for, for those two guys. Uh, but he outweighs him by 40 pounds as well, or 30 pounds, 254 pounds versus 285 pounds. And, you know, the arm length as well is great for Darius Robinson. So, I mean, I might swing if both those guys were there, Chop and, and Darius Robinson. I might swing for Chop Robinson just because of the the juice he brings off the edge and the potential upside of a of a big time pass rusher. But Darius Robinson's production in college was better, and you know you're getting a big time run defender with a guy that can give you a little bit as a pass rusher. Maybe he's not double digit sack guy with his burst and his juice, but I think he can get to the quarterback a little bit too. I, I like Darius Robinson a lot and. We look at, you know, Zach Frazier, some of these offensive linemen we talked about at pick 31. If it comes down to, we, we talked a bit about this with Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle out of Illinois as well, right? It's like, man, maybe there's more of a need on the offensive line long-term for the 49ers, but 
Darius Robinson might be better than those offensive linemen that are available for the 49ers at 31. Johnny Newton, defensive tackle from Illinois, might be better than those offensive linemen that are available for the 49ers at 31. I'd rather see them go D-line if it's a better football player, best player available, than force the offensive line if, the, if there's a player there that they don't, that if they're not in love with the guy at 31 on the offensive line. I would take Darius Robin for example, Darius Robinson, for example, over Zach Frazier that we've talked about today all day long if they were both on the board, and that's who we're choosing from at pick 31. Darius Robinson to me just it looks like a guy who day one I can tell you exactly what his role would be and how he fits and I've seen these other guys with the 49ers look like that but on more expensive contracts right like just in the sense of like one year rental guy goes out you could develop this guy opposite Nick Bosa and then you continue to work with him as a pass rusher because you're right like there were times I saw him get around that corner he doesn't do it with like this finesse he does it more with strength I'm telling you guys, you guys put on the film, you watch him. He looks like a, maybe it's their uniforms because they wear those all black uniforms. Yeah. But he looks like this, you know, tall, lean, strong, good motor, edge setting guy who's really stout versus the run. And I think for the 49ers, one of the big things is making teams one dimensional by being able to shut down the run. And then, okay, let's bring in Leonard Floyd to go get after the quarterback. They did bring in Yitor Gross Matos. That's kind of that profile of a player in free agency. So it tells me maybe the 49ers are, are planning to go another direction at 31. Does that mean they don't like Darius Robinson? Do they think he's going to be gone before they pick? Are they going a different direction? Um, so I wonder that. But, I mean, Darius Robinson is is definitely that guy. I, to try to put a, a, a picture into some of our listeners' heads, Croc, if they're trying to get an idea of what this player is, what he looks like, kind of how he plays, he plays a lot like, and my short, my, my one phrase scouting report is Balky's type. He's a Trent Balky type all day. He's got those long arms. He's a big player. He controls you in the run game. He's kind of like Alden Smith with less juice with the way he plays. Can you see that? Same college? Oh, I, I didn't even think about the Missouri thing. Yeah, he was Missouri Tiger, right? He was. Yeah. he's got He's got some weight on. Alden Smith doesn't have the juice that Alden Smith had athletically, but as far as the long arms and the power and the way he wins as a rusher, Alden Smith could get around the corner, but he didn't always try to go around the corner. He went through guys a lot. He was amazing at just pushing guys right back into the quarterback. Um, Darius Robinson isn't that. I'm not saying he's Alden Smith, but he's he will push guys into the quarterback. Like I watched him just bull rush a guy right into the lap of the quarterback. Like he will do that from the edge. <laughs> and again, I, I could see the 49ers being like. We've seen you do some three down lineman type stuff and, and rush from there. What do you think about? We could play you outside, but what do you think about rush situations? We put you inside. What do you think about that? Like, heck yeah, let me just but bully NFL guards and put them in the quarterback's lap and have Bosa and Leonard Floyd come off the edge. Yeah, use that that little just that movie just swims past them, slaps right by him. Uh, I could see that on the interior as well. So yeah, player I like a lot, Darius Robinson, absolutely on the radar for the San Francisco 49ers, I think in that late round one area. Next, Ennis Rakestraw, his teammate, cornerback out of the University of Missouri. Where does he fit for the San Francisco 49ers? Next. Today's episode of Locked Up 49ers is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say goodbye to those busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, no matter what shape your bracket is. And currently, and uh, I know a lot of folks that their bracket isn't in the best of shape, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all at FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And of course, if you don't want to bet on college hoops, that's okay because they've got every sport you can imagine at FanDuel. You can get on that action and including the NFL and those draft props. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Croc, I'm going to hand the mic over to you because you are our resident cornerback expert Ennis Rakestraw is a player that we've been asked to check out. Uh, a lot of people really like his game. What did you think when you put on that Missouri tape and you stopped watching Darius Robinson and you started watching the defense backs? And I have a, I, I imagine you watched the DB first when you put on Missouri. Did you? 
I know how you roll because you'll watch other posi- other players on other schools that aren't even ready for the draft, and you'll be like, you know what? I watch Clemson, and how about this freshman guy who's not even a, not even going to be in the draft for three more years? And you're like, hey, Croc, you're supposed to be watching the guy on the other side. <laughs> so, uh, what'd you see with Ennis Rakestraw, cornerback out of Missouri? All right, big moving cornerback. So th- to see him be someone that's 5'11", 183, somewhat surprising because he moved more like a corner that was 6'2", 202 pounds. Like that was just like, like just from a movement skill standpoint. And I will say, if I'm saying that, that's not a great thing. You know, I, I'm looking for when you talk about, you know, like corners with size, the guys that are 6'2", 200 pounds, but move like he's 5'11", 183. Yeah. So don't necessarily uh, love his movement skills, but I didn't think that it was just really bad to where, like, I don't know if you remember uh, uh, the kid out of Stanford. This is years ago, probably 2017 draft. I know who you're talking about, and I think we're going to be over 2 and, and blanking on the names of those past draft prospects. A lot of a lot of prospects going through our heads and a lot of brain. I mean, year after year, there's guys and uh he was a guy, I think he ended up going undrafted to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I remember all that. Yeah, and he got he was he was a guy that was getting like first round hype, even like people really liked hype. him. Yeah, and then ended up falling all the way out of the draft because he wasn't a great athlete. Yeah, and I was like, uh like I don't like his feet. I, I think he kind of moses or, or, around. He's not quick transitioning in and out of his breaks. There were a lot of things like I did not care about about the Stanford kid. Uh, Enos, I feel like although he's more of a longer un- uh, mover, you know who he kind of reminded me of? He kind of reminded me of this guy named Eric Crocker. You know, And I don't think I've ever made that comparison to a guy. Now, I, I am bigger than him. I was much bigger playing than he was. I was listed at 6'2". Uh, roughly 200 pounds, but I always looked at the 5'11", 185, 190 guys and envied how well they were able to get in and out of breaks and transition and whatnot. But the thing I did like about Enos, which when I go back and watch some of my stuff, I'm like, man, Eric, maybe you didn't give yourself enough credit for like how good you were able to move. I was able to master knowing that I, I was not going to be the best tester. I was not the most agile guy, but I I use just pure athleticism. Like, let me just play off of being an athlete, which I was that. And he looks like he plays more off of that as opposed to being like this smooth, angelic mover. So those were um, a couple of things I noticed right away. Um, more athlete than de- technician. That's my next thing. So I think that aligns with me. And I, I mentioned me. That was just kind of off the dome. That wasn't something in my notes. But more athlete than technician. And I don't know how well you can get away with that at the NFL level, but that was something that I felt like he did well at Missouri. Just a football player. Croc was the football player. He's a baller. You get him out there. doesn't matter what the sport. He's going to be trouble. Uh, Quentin Meeks is the name we're thinking of. Quentin Meeks. Quentin there we Meeks go. Out of Stanford. And this rake straw looks bigger. And you know why he looks bigger, Croc? And who knows? Maybe, maybe he lost some weight because he was trying to get a little faster at the combine, too. So he might have played more like 190. I uh, wouldn't be shocked there because I agree with you. Yeah, 32 inch arms, which are nice long arm length. Uh, and you nailed it with the athleticism part of it too. He ran four five one in the 40, which is not super problematic, but it's not a dynamic athlete, especially in Indy, where they got this fast track and everyone it seems like is is running faster and faster every year. Four five one starts to stand out as, you know, not the greatest time for a cornerback, especially a guy that you might want to draft high. Um he played mostly on the outside crock. He played, I was a little frustrated against LSU because they got these big time corners. It's the first or big time receivers. First game I put on, and he's over there at right cornerback the whole time against this dude number 86. I'm like, who's this 86 dude? I want to see him covering Brian Thomas. I want to see him covering Malik Neighbors. And, he, and he, he, he rarely did in that game. So that was a that was a bummer. Um, but I I see a guy who probably moves inside and plays a little nickel with his profile. He's not afraid to tackle, he's actually a really solid tackler. Like he just looks like a like not not necessarily a hitter, but he's just a solid sound tackler. I think he's someone that could play nickel. That's probably where I would look for him in the NFL, which means he's probably not going to be an early round pick. I, I'm I'm thinking round three at the earliest, probably from Ennis Regstraw, even though I like a lot of his game. He pulled a Samuel Womack on this, huh? Like Womack was a guy not look five nine. You know, you watch the film and it's like, oh, he's got this tall, long corner out there. And he's like, no, five foot nine. And Rakeshaw, same thing. I'm surprised. I didn't know these numbers. I thought he was a six two. 200 pound guy like that's what it would look like uh 
from movement skills standpoint and when you just watch him play. Uh, the one thing he did do very well, all right, so it's not all negative on Rakeshaw. Rakeshaw, I think he uh, did a really good job of reading patterns from press alignment. So uh, that was probably one of – God, it reminds me a lot of myself. One of the favorite things to do, play press, bail out, and read the concepts. I'm reading two to one. If two goes away, I can squeeze one. Uh, you know, if it's a uh, cover two, I'm building out. As soon as I see that, I'm reading that. I'm flipping my hips, getting downhill. And I, I thought he did those things well from a, a press alignment, which I, I value. If, if you go back to, um, I think it was 2015, uh, Josh Norman, one of the best I've seen at doing that. I think the other one that was really good was cornerback at Ohio State, uh, Jeffrey Okuda. Okuda was really good at that where he, he could read these concepts down, front press alignment, squeeze stuff, break on passes. Um, and then the NFL said, we're going to draft you number three overall and make you play a lot of man, even though it's the opposite of what made you get in college. And that didn't work quite out well. Uh, Ray Straw, maybe somebody that could play a little inside, but I would like to know what his agility numbers are because you're running four or five, one, whatever. Okay, you, you can play outside. that. You can play maybe in the slot. But if you are going to play more than nickel because you're 5'11", 183, a little bit more slightly built, and you want to play inside, you have to have really good change of direction. You have to be able to play in space. And those are the things where that would still be like a question mark. Yep. And he didn't run the agilities at uh, the combine. So we don't have I wonder that. why. Yeah. Uh, probably a pr pretty good reason why. Uh, Around grade? Third round area, like 90, pick 94, where the 49ers are selecting. You think that's a good spot for someone like Ennis Rakestraw? I see some people really higher on him, but he, to me, just watching him, with there not being anything that really jumped, like even from a playmaking standpoint, like I, I don't know how many games I watched, and it's just like you're just kind of watching them, and it's like, man, where's the, where's the plays at? Where's the things that jump out? You know, we, you talked about the Clemson kid, right, the, the corner, A.J. Terrell's little brother, and how well he did it as a, as a freshman. But even aside from him, watching Wiggins, even if Wiggins wasn't, like, super impactful in the passing game, which he ended up with an interception that game, he's still chasing guys down from behind. I mean, I saw him do that multiple times. Like, just, yeah, okay, if I'm not going to have a whole lot of action in the passing game. Let me show other areas where I could be valuable to this defense. And I'm not sure I saw that a whole lot, at least in the games that I watched from Rick Straw. There was one play in particular I liked from Rake Straw. It was just recognition. It was like, I've seen the tape. I know what these guys are about to do. And he bolted across the field on a crosser, a crossing route. Like, it wasn't this thing where, like, he's going to wait to see what's going to happen. They snapped the ball. He ran to where the crossing route was going to go. Like, he knew, like, he was in the huddle, in the offensive huddle, and knew what the play call was going to be. And he got over there. And, uh, and I can't remember if they completed the pass or not, but he was there. And that's hard to chase a crosser and be in position to make a play on the on the guy as soon as he catches it or even break up the play on the opposite side of the field. So I, I, that, I, I thought that was interesting, just you know, that, using his dome a little bit out there on the football field. I like this, though. I'm going to write Eric Crocker down in the comps. I didn't have a comp for Ennis Rakestraw. Eric Crocker, future Arena Bowl champion Ennis Rakestraw, maybe. <laughs> hey, it happens. life comes at you quick. That, that definitely can be the case. <laughs> uh, do you like Rakestraw or DJ James better? Because you had like that late third-round grade on James, too. I like James better. Just more of a a, a a mover that I kind of prioritize when I'm watching. Like I just get drawn more to that kind of movement skills. Ability. Doesn't mean that he's going to be better, but I just know I like those movement skills better. More ability to project to be stickier in man coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. All right. There you go. Zach Frazier out of West Virginia. Ennis Rakestraw, corner from Missouri, and defensive lineman Darius Robinson from Missouri as well. Let us know what you think about the 49ers draft, what you think about these prospects and who you like. And Croc and I are going to have to do some more work on our big board and really start to hammer this thing out. Because I think, Croc, at this point, we might have done a scouting report, a deep dive on the guy the 49ers are going to draft at pick 31. So let's rank those guys out on a future episode of Locked On 49ers. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Croc and I back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers.